This video is sponsored by Linode. Anyone can build on Linode, whether you need a development portfolio to land your next job or you're ready to put your app into production, Linode can get you there. For $20 in free hosting credit, click the link below or sign up at linode.com slash traversy. Hey, what's going on guys? So in this project, we're going to be building a mobile first layout using HTML and CSS. And we're actually cloning the landing page of the CVS pharmacy web app. And I just called it TVS just to change things up a little bit. But you can see we have the, the top part here with the search bar, this little area, these different buttons, which we'll be using CSS grid for. And then we have this sticky footer at the bottom with some font awesome icons. And if you look at the actual app here, Uh, this is what we'll be building. I may actually add a project to my modern HTML and CSS course on Udemy where we create all these other sub pages as well. But for now, we're just going to build the home page. And what you're looking at here is, is just the device toolbar in the Google Chrome dev tool. So this icon, if I click that, we can toggle it and you'll see that this is what it will look like on larger screens, which still looks pretty good. And you can change devices as well. So we can look at like iPhone X, we can look at the Pixel, we can look at an iPad. And I'm just going to keep it on the 678 just because it gives it this nice chrome that looks like an, an actual phone. And what I mean by mobile first is as we're building this, we're going to keep it on the mobile screen and build it for the mobile device. And then if we need to add any media queries for larger screens later on, we'll do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to actually Um, put this down here and make this smaller so that we can have both on the screen at the same time, both VS Code and the in the browser. All right. So as far as the file structure, I just have an, an IMG folder, an image folder with all the different images. And you can get these in the link in the description to the code pen. I have all the images hosted in the cloud so you can grab them from there. Or, of course, you can use your own images. So in addition to this folder, we just need an index HTML and we just need a style dot CSS. And we're going to start off with the markup here in the HTML file. So let's use Emmett to create a boilerplate. So exclamation enter. And then for the title, we'll say TVS pharmacy. And let's add a link to our style sheet. Okay, and then we're going to be using font awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up a new browser tab here or browser. And I'm just going to search for font awesome CDN. I'm going to use font awesome for that way we don't have to actually log in and download a, a kit and stuff like that. So if we just click this bootstrap CDN link, we can grab it right here. So this link right here, I'll just click and copy it and then we'll paste that right above our link to our style sheet. And then the last thing we need is just a font. I'm going to be using the Roboto font from Google fonts. So if we go to uh, fonts dot Google and just search for Roboto, grab that real quick. I'm just going to grab the link, copy it, and then we can close that up, paste it in. And there we go. So I'll save that. And then I'm just going to open this up in my browser. So I'm using a, a, an extension called live server. So I'm going to right click and just open with live server. Okay, and obviously there's nothing here because the body's empty, but I'm going to open my Chrome dev tools with command option I and I already have my device toolbar selected. If you don't, you can just click it and you can just toggle it on and off like that. Okay, I'll just make this smaller. All right, so now we have this nice Chrome around our user interface. So let's start on the body. So for the body, we are going to have that splash page. We'll use a little bit of JavaScript to just make it flash at the beginning. But we do need the markup for that, which is simply going to be an ID of splash. And then we're going to have an image with the class of logo that's going to go to image slash logo PNG. All right. We don't need this right now. So what I'm going to do is just comment that out for now. Those lines out. Then we're going to have a content class. And basically the content class is going to wrap around everything except for the footer because I want the footer to be sticky and I'll show you how to do that later on. But just know that everything is going to go in this content class except the footer. Okay, including the header. So let's add our header. We we'll use the HTML5 header tag with a class of app dash header. 
and inside here we're going to have a container because we basically want to push everything here into the middle and we want to set a width. Okay, so inside the container we're going to have two things, the logo and the text input, the search input. So let's do the logo. So image with a class of logo. logo PNG and then underneath that we'll have an input and that's going to have a class of search and let's give it a placeholder of search dot 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 and then we should be able to go under the header and we want our subheader so basically this part right here I'm going to give a class it's going to be a div with the class of subheader and you want to make sure you're still within your um, content div which ends right here. All right, so in subheader we're going to have two flex items. We're going to align this with Flexbox. So this is going to be the first flex item which is a div with two paragraphs and then the image is the other. So let's create the div with the first paragraph which is going to say now uh delivering, say now delivering RX and more and then we'll have another paragraph which just says find out now and we want to use a, a chevron icon here so we we'll use an i tag with a font awesome class fa and then another class of fa dash chevron dash right okay so we'll go ahead and save that and take a look at our application or our ui and that's what it looks like so we also need the delivery image in the subheader which is going to go under the div So right under this div, let's say image and give it a source of image and then delivery PNG, which we won't be able to see because it's white, just like the logo. For now at least. So that's it for the subheader. Now we want to do this area, which are the grid items or boxes. So we're going to go under the subheader but still within the content div and let's create a class of grid. That's going to be a grid container where we actually set the display property to grid. And then I'm also going to add the container class to just move everything into the middle. Um, so in here we're going to have six items. Okay, they're each going to have a class of item. And this is the first one, which is this right here. So we have an H4. This one is pharmacy. And then we have a paragraph. Let's say two RXs that are ready to refill. and then an image which this one is going to be the medicine bottle so it's medicine png all right and if i save that we take a look we just have a giant image we'll fix that later um now for the rest of these the other five items i'm going to paste these in just because i don't want to be too repetitive you can just copy them or you can grab them from the code pen so under this item which ends right here i'm going to go ahead and just paste these in Okay, so the second one is the deals and rewards, and we have the second clinic instead of the minute clinic, the shop, the photo, and the weekly ad item. All right? And then I'll save that. You can see we have all those images now, all those items, and now we want the footer. So, we're going to go under the content div now. So, it should be the very last thing right above the body, and let's add a footer tag with a class of app-footer. and this is going to be a ul with some li's and each li is going to have an icon so this one is fa and then fa dash heart and then the the text is just going to say home okay and then i'll just i'm just going to copy and paste in the other three okay so we have home we have show card account and find store all with different icons so if i save that and we go all the way down you can see our footer Okay, which is very ugly. So now we're going to jump into the CSS. So we can close that up, open up our CSS, and I'm going to start off here with just creating a couple variables or our CSS custom properties on our root scope, meaning we can use these anywhere. So we're going to have a primary color which is going to be hexadecimal CC000, which is like the um sorry, four zeros, which is like that CVS red. And then let's do secondary color which is a slightly darker red so 7c0000 and i have a whole video on css custom properties if you're interested and then for the let's see we're going to say html body 
and we're going to set a font family of Roboto sans serif and then I'm going to add a, a height here later when we get to the, to the sticky footer but I'm not going to do that just yet uh, I also want to add a reset for uh, box sizing I want to set that to border box and we want to reset the margin and padding for everything so margin zero and padding zero Okay, so down here, let's start on the container. So the, the point of the container is basically to kind of move everything to the middle, give it a width. I'm going to give it a fluid width of 90%. And for the margin, we're going to say zero top and bottom auto left and right to move it to the middle. And let's add a little bit of padding, say 10 pixels. And we'll just set the overflow to none and save. Okay, you can see the search is pushed over a little bit. So let's work on let's start top down. So we'll work on the header. So that has a class of app dash header. And we're going to give it a background color of the variable we have of primary color. So we need to use this var and then op and then parentheses and then the name of the variable. Okay. And then let, I'm going to set a box shadow. so that right here we have a little bit of of shadow. So for that I'm going to use 3 pixels, 3 pixels. We'll do 10 for the blur and then for the color we'll do 888. Okay, so that just gives us this little shadow which looks pretty nice. And then we're actually going to exp before I do anything, let's make the the size of this logo a little smaller. So we'll say app header and then class logo. Let's set the width to 170 pixels. Okay, so I want these to be aligned on top of each other. So what I'm going to do for the container in the app header. So I'm going to say app header container. I'm going to make that a flex box. So we'll say display flex, which if I save by default, flex box is going to align horizontally. However, if I change it to if I change the flex direction, to call them, it'll they'll go on top of each other, which is what I want. And the reason I put it on the container is because if we look at our HTML, if we look at our header, the immediate child is the container. So if I set this to flex, then the container would be the flex item. And I don't want that. I want both of these to be the flex items. So I put the flex on the container. Okay, uh, let's see. In addition to that, let's align the items to the center. Okay, since we're using Flexbox, we can do that. And then let's also justify the content to the center. And I'm going to set padding, so we'll do 15 top and bottom, 10 left and right. And then let's move the uh we'll add some margin bottom to the logo to move that down a little bit. So let's say margin bottom will do 16 pixels. Okay, now I want to style this this um, search box just because it, it doesn't look very good. We want it to be a little bigger, add some padding. So let's do app header and then search. We actually don't even need the search class since it's only one input. We could just target the input with the type of text. and let's set some padding we'll do 7 pixels and let's set a width i think 300 is good i mean i don't think any smartphones are going to be that you know smaller than that so i think 300 should be safe um what else let's add, let's change the border color to let's do 777 let's do border color Actually no, let's not do that. Let's let's leave the border off. I don't know why I did that. Okay. And then we're just going to add a border radius of 3 pixels. Just a slight uh want to set border 0 there. All right, so that should be it for the text input. Now let's move to the subheader, which is this part here. Okay, so let's say class subheader background is going to be the secondary color so let's use a variable 
or custom property of secondary color. Okay, that image is huge, so I'm just going to I'm just going to um, shrink that down real quick. So we'll say subheader image and let's give it a width of 40 pixels. Okay. So back up here in subheader, let's make the color of everything white. Okay. And then let's add a, a box shadow here as well. I'm actually going to use the same shadow I used up here, so I'll just grab that. Okay, so now you can see that has a little shadow. Now I want this to be slightly um slightly thinner than the the header here. So and I also want basically margin auto as well. So let's say margin and let's set this to 0 on the top and bottom. Auto, I'm sorry, let's do 0 top, auto right, and then I want some margin on the bottom. So we'll do uh what do we want to do here? 16 pixels and then auto on the left. And then I'm going to set a width here of 90%, which should should make it a little, yeah, there we go. So now it's in more than the the app header. Okay, so I'm, I want to I want the font size to be a little smaller, so we'll say font size it's 16 by default, so let's do 14. And of course, we want to add some padding here. Okay, move it away from the sides. And then as far as alignment goes, I'm going to display flex. Because remember, we have two flex items, this div and this image. And by displaying flex, now they're going horizontally. Okay, and I'm just going to add the align items center. And then I want basically the, the truck icon I want to be over here. So when we use flex, we have a property called justify content. And I can take the remaining space and do what I want with it. In this case, I want it to be in between the two. So I'm going to choose space between for my uh, value here. And I'll save. And then you can see the remaining space is now in between the two flex items. So let's see. I think that's all we need to do here. So for this paragraph, these the text is really close together. So I'm just going to add. subheader and then our paragraph let's just give it a um we'll say margin 4 pixels just to kind of split it up a little bit all right so i think that looks pretty good looks clean now for the grid for these items here let's see we have grid that's the main grid container and then we have grid and then the item and we have the image let's say grid item image and i just want to shrink that these images up so we can see what the hell's going on so let's say with and the grid item images we're going to do a 30 pixel width all right now we want two columns right if we look here we have two grid columns so the way that we do this is on the parent which is the class of grid we want to set the display property to grid i also have a grid crash course if you're interested in that. Now doing that itself doesn't do anything. We need to add grid template columns and we want two even columns. So we use fractionals, FRs. So we can say one fractional or one fractional. And I'm sorry, and one fractional. And this will give us two columns. If I save, now we have two columns. If I wanted three, I could add another one and that will give us three. So the grid system is is fantastic. Um now another way we could do this is we could say repeat twice one fraction and that will do the same thing gives us two columns. Okay? Now let's add some spacing or some gap. We can use the grid gap property. I'm going to set that to 10 pixels just to kind of split it up a little. Now the items Let's go down here into the items. Um we're going to set a property a uh, uh, display property of flex which by default will align everything in the item horizontally I don't want that so I want to set flex direction to column which will make them on top of each other make them vertical all right and the I'm um, the reason I'm doing this is so I can easily align the image over here which I'll show you in a second um uh, now we want to add a border of 1 pixel and let's do ccc which is a light gray and solid. 
Okay, so each item has a border around it. Let's add some padding to take it away from the border. So we'll do 10 pixels. And then I'm going to do a light box shadow. Let's do one pixel and two pixel blur and color will be CCC. So it just gives it that kind of um, raised effect. So let's see what else do we want to do here. Um, the H4s here are very close to the, the paragraph text. So let's grab those. We'll say grid item H4. And let's just add a margin bottom of five pixels just to move those down a little. And then for the paragraphs themselves, it's a grid item paragraph. I'm going to shrink the font a little from 16 to 14. And I'm also going to add a color of the secondary color. So we'll use our custom property here, our secondary color. All right. I'm also going to set the font weight to bold and set a margin bottom just to push the image down a little bit. So our margin bottom 20 pixels. Okay, now since I used Flexbox for the item itself on the image, I can use the align self property. So we're going to set that align self to flex end, which is basically to the right. So if I save now, you can see all those images are now aligned to the right. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for the, the grid items. Looks like I just wrote two here instead of four. Just change that. It doesn't really matter. But say four refill. All right. So now these are identical except for the footer. So let's not let's work on the footer styling. So before I do the sticky footer and show you how to do that, I'm just going to style it, add the background color, align them and so on. So let's do app dash footer and we're going to add a background of light gray, so F4 three times and then color of 444, which is a lighter color and then a padding of 10 pixels. If I save it looks like that so far. Let's shrink down the font size a little to 14 and let's add a margin top to push everything on the top up 10 pixels. Okay. Now for the alignment, remember these are list items, right? So I'm going to make the UL, the unordered list, a flex box. So let's say app footer UL. And uh, let's go ahead and set that to flex. So if I do that, you'll see they'll align horizontally. And I'm going to set the align items. to the center and then the justify um, yeah justify content so justify content I'm going to use space around and what that does is this remaining space here it's sort of like space between where space between it would put it in between each item but space around it'll actually put it on the outside as well so it'll go in between and on the outside it'll basically distribute that evenly so if I save There we go. Okay, we also want to remove uh, list style. Set that to none. So let's see. I also want to set the list items themselves to display flex and then put them in a in a column so that the icon is on top of the text. So let's say app footer UL LI. So now we're targeting the list items and we're going to say display flex, but we're going to set the flex direction to column instead of row. And now you can see they're on top of each other. Now we want to center them. So we want to use a line items center and save. And now you can see that the icons are in the middle. Now I just want to make the icons a little bigger than that. So I'm going to say app dash footer. UL LI icon and set the font size to 22 pixels. Okay, just to make them a little bigger. All right, now you can see that this is not this footer is not sticky. 
Okay, there's space underneath it, which I don't want. And I'm going to show you an article that is really, really cool. It gives you a bunch of different ways to add a sticky footer because th this was a, a pain point for me for a long time. But it's at CSS Tricks. And if you just search for a sticky footer, basically it gives you five different ways to do this. And I used to do this kind of stuff here with negative margins and so on. But what I want to do is the third option, which is Flexbox or fourth. Right here. So basically we've already done this. We have content around everything except the footer. And then we just simply need to add this a little bit of CSS. So on the HTML and body, we want to add a height of 100 percent and in we want to display body as a flex item set the flex direction to column meaning vertically set flex one on the content and flex shrink zero on the footer so doing these things should push the footer down to the bottom and keep it there all right so let's go back and let's go up to the top here and i actually wanted to i didn't want to do that i wanted to have body here and put this uh, whoops put this uh, down here and then in here we wanted to put our height 100% and then on body let's display flex and set the flex direction to column all right and then we have to just add this flex 10 auto to the content and then flex shrink 0 to the footer so let's go down to content actually we didn't put content anywhere so we'll put it right here and then in the footer so app footer which is right here let's add flex shrink 0 and save and now you can see that this is now stuck to the bottom. So I think that that's one of the easiest and cleanest ways to to do this rather than using negative margins and and all that crap. Okay, so now we just have the splash page to do. So I'm going to go back to the index html. Actually no, before we do that, let's let's um handle desktop widths. So I'm going to just copy the link here and then open up a new tab and stretch this out just so we can see uh oops see what it looks like so let's see paste that in so it doesn't look too bad but i think it would be better if we had three columns instead of two so this is actually really easy we can also make the images a little bigger if you if you see something else that you might want to change on larger screens that's fine but i think that i just want to have three columns instead of two and just larger images so this is really easy all we have to do is add a media query so we'll say at media and we're going to use in this case a min width case okay? what we've been doing is a mobile first approach we designed for a mobile screen and now we're going to we're going to work on larger screens so typically what i usually do is mobile last i'll do the you know the the larger screen first and I'll add my mobile queries with max width. In this case we're doing the reverse. We're doing this the small screen first and then min width. And I'm going to do a min width of 768 pixels. Okay? So basically if the screen is 768 or larger, then let's take our grid, okay? So this is our grid container and let's set the grid template columns which init initially are repeat 2 1fr so two columns but now we're going to do three on larger screens and then i'm going to take the image so grid item image which i believe we have set to a width of 30 i'm going to set it to 60 make them a little bigger so now if i save now we have three columns and we have the images much bigger not much bigger but i think it looks it, it looks a little better Okay, and I mean if you want to add some other stuff, maybe you want to make these bigger or something, you can do that, but I'm focusing mostly on mobile here. So, let's close that up and this still looks the same. We still have our two columns here because this is all done in the media query. So, now let's do the splash. So, I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this right here. 
So basically we just have an ID of splash and then we have the logo just kind of above everything. So we need to add some CSS to this. So we'll go right here and let's just put a comment in here. This is the splash screen It has an ID of splash. And we just want we want it to cover everything. So the way we do that is we set the position to absolute. Okay, so absolute meaning that it's kind of it's it's taken out of the regular flow of elements and then we can set set it to the top zero left zero. So basically we're saying start here. Okay, so put it here absolute and then let's make the width 100% so it goes all the way across and then the height is going to be 100 viewport heights meaning it takes up the entire page. So now the splash div which only has the logo in it is taking this whole area up. Now I'm going to set a background color and I'm going to use the variable, I'm going to use the primary color and save and you can see it covers the entire thing. Okay, now I'm going to make sure that it's it's always on top by just setting a Z index of 2 and let's let's now take this image. We'll, we'll shrink it up first of all. So let's say splash image and we'll set the width here to 300 pixels and then I want to move it to the middle. So it's parent, which is the splash ID. I'm going to display flex. Okay, and then we're going to set the flex. Um, yeah, we're going to set the flex direction to column and we want to align items to the center. Okay, so that moves it to the center that way. Now I want it to move to the center um, vertically as well. So let's do justify content to the center. Okay, that moves it to the middle and then Basically, what we want to do as far as making it disappear is we're going to add a class of fade and that fade is going to set the opacity to zero, meaning that it'll it'll disappear. So I'm going to go. Oops, I'm going to go under the image here. And let's say splash and then class of fade and set the opacity. to zero, which is invisible. Okay, and we're going to dynamically um, put that on with JavaScript. Now I want it to have a fading effect. So we simply need to add a transition property on the splash element and we're going to transition the opacity property with one second. So it gives it that that it take, takes one second to change the opacity to fade out. So let's save that. Now, obviously, this isn't going to do anything. It just stays there. So this is where the JavaScript comes in. And I'm not even going to create a new file or anything because it's so simple. So I'm just going to go down to the bottom here and add in a script tag. Okay, and what we want to do is call a set timeout and set timeout takes in a function. I'm going to use an arrow function and it takes in a second parameter of the time that you want to wait. for whatever you put in here to happen. And I'm going to wait 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds. Actually, let's do two. So two seconds. And what we want to happen in here is we want to toggle the fade class. So let's say document dot get element by D and we want to select the splash element. Okay, so we're selecting splash and then we're going to say dot class list dot add. This is a way in JavaScript that you can add a class. Actually, I'm not going to add. Let's, let's use toggle. So toggle will add it if it's there or remove it if it's not there. Um, and then we're going to add in the fade class. Okay. So let's save that. And now let's reload this. Um, what did I do here? Why isn't it fading? So we have splash fade opacity zero. Oh, so what I've done here is I've I've said there's a fade. Th this is styling a fade class inside of splash. Fade is actually going to be attached to splash, so it, there should be no space here. So we'll save that and there we go. 
So we re reload waits two seconds and then it fades. Because what's happening is it's getting that fade class put on. Actually, we don't even have to use toggle. We can just use add and that'll do the same thing. All right. So that's it. And this project is up live right now at traversymedia.com slash TVS if you want to check it out on specific devices. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little project. Please leave a thumbs up if you did. And I will see you next time.